Okay, let's open the meeting. At six. Uh, Three. 6.43. Oh, 6.43. Yeah. 6.43. Yeah. Yes, we're good? Uh, addition to the agenda. We consideration of appointment and potential motion to appoint Zoe as a full-time rep to CVRPC. Okay, that's an addition. Yeah. Okay, any other additions? Nada. Um, review of minutes, July 15th and July 18th special meeting. Um, I see July 18th. We have July 15th minutes. There was sent there was sent an email with the agenda. Okay. I don't have them, but they look good. Right. Okay. Look all right so they look good. Yeah, I've got some suggestions for July 15th. Is that what we're talking about? Yep. Okay. So I was present at that meeting. I don't have them with me. So. I don't have them either. But okay. She's bringing the print. Oh, you got July 15th. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Thank you. And Zoe, you need one? Yeah, thank you. Well, you and I might have to share. Sure. Okay, there you go. <laughs> That's what we got several. Anybody on that is? Oh. We have several copies. Oh, there's several pages. Yeah. Okay, got it. So, Tom, you need one? Okay. So, okay. The select board attendance, I would like to be added to that list. Yes. And. Were you there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you might want to be at it. I made motions. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, public comment just uh, could be replacing culverts on Horn of the Moon. Yep. Um, but also, I think we want to add that the select board indicated the road foreman will follow up with him. Just. Yep. Because sure. I think we did. Yep. And yeah, that was the only. Really significant stuff I had. Um, it is three pages rather than six. Upper right hand corner says page one of six. And so. My Word program stopped working in an old meeting yeah. again. Yeah. And so the online version can't yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. But. So. Okay. Motion to accept the minutes? As amended. As amended. We have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 July 15th minutes have passed. July 18th, special meeting. I motion to accept. Second. And just by way of discussion, under emerge from executive session at 8.38, um, you generally don't write no action was taken when uh -huh. you're about to take a, have a motion okay. in there. Also, if you can change under the attendance, put that that I, I attended remotely. You have, you're attended, but. You're, you're under we the usually, we usually we have in the past put them. Oh, right. remote. Okay. Right, yeah. Remote attendance. Yeah. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Your second? Any any uh, further comments? Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. All eight teeth passed. Just point of information, who's doing minutes for tonight? Well, I did formally say that I was no longer going to be doing them last week, and I automatically started taking notes. But I would like to be better at taking a firm stance, so I, I'm not going to be taking minutes. Tonight? No. Okay. I can, I can, I can, I can, um, I can for tonight, but I did say last week that I'm no longer going to be doing them. Right. Okay. We'll do that around here. Okay. okay. Whoever. If you're willing. Thank you. You want to do it for tonight? Great help. Okay. Thank you, Rosie. Do it for tonight. Um, Sounds good. So just moved by Scott. Yes. Yeah. And it was unanimously passed. Yes. Yep. Thank the you. Minutes for Thank the you, July 18th. Yeah. Thanks. And July 15th, the same, actually. Yeah. 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 Okay. And that's it. Okay. We're all set. Thanks. Passed with a few minor corrections or some such thing. Um, 635, private road name, Wyvern Way, 170 Cherry Hill. Mm -hmm. Pu public comment. Is there any public comment? Yeah. Oh, public comment, yeah, sorry. Public comment? Aye. you public? Yeah. Sure. Okay, did you sign in? No. Okay, there's a sign in sheet right there where that clipboard is. But the public comment is separate from the private road name, yeah. Ben. Right, so, yeah, yeah we, I made a mistake. So I went to the private road name first, but I should have looked for uh, public comment. Public comment just means people come in and they want to talk about something. 
I are you in that category? Yeah. Okay. You want to talk about the vote? Yeah. Okay. Well, then you can wait to that agenda item. Which That's is fine. right now. Okay. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> no public comment. No public, no public comment. comment. Okay. Good enough. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to the private road name Wyvern Way. And I assume that's you. Yeah. With Ben Graham. Are yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Good enough. Uh, as a rep for the Cherry Tree Hill Community Association, which is the condominium association that owns that 170. Okay. And so that's going to be a private road now? It has to be a private road, apparently, because there are three or more Housing. private. Right. separate structures on the drive. So mm -hmm. I'm building a third of four. So um, yeah. the 911 board kind of got me up to date on everything. Yeah. The last zoning administrator had suggested that we avoid that yeah. because it was just a bunch of yeah. mess. And we yeah. were like, great. Yeah. <laughs> but then they said, no, you have to. So yeah. we did it. We have to present our name to the select board. We've okay. done that. Yeah. As soon as you approve that name, the um, Kevin, the new Z yeah. name, mm -hmm. will then submit the 911 form. Yeah. And that will then they'll the board will process that. Yeah. My question is, do we need to put who puts the sign up? And when do we change? When does it all happen? Like well, the town we usually puts numbers on the, on the mailboxes, and when do we start telling people? Town puts a sign. Yeah. Town usually puts a sign. So yeah, yeah, it's a private road. Yeah. So usually, past oh. practice has been that the town puts those up. Yeah. Um, as far as changing your address, you'll be notified. There will be, you will get a letter from the current zoning administrator as soon as the nine one one has been processed, stating what your mailing address will be, and that will already have gone to the postmaster, so they'll already know about it. So as soon as we get that letter, we can go ahead and start telling people and change our mailbox? Yes. Great. If you get mail delivered, we'll get mail delivered anymore. <laughs> I'll like to make a motion to accept the private road name of Wyvern Way from 170. I would second a motion. I'm I'm a little bit nervous having you know no written basis for for making this, uh, but I'm it's, I'm confident with the zoning administrator. It's actually the, part of the DRV decision that was written and recorded. Okay, I just, for not, their for their whole thing. It's just not part of our our document. So understand. so would it be in order to have the motion be to authorize the zoning administrator to apply the name Wyvern Way to the 170 Cherry Tree Hill uh, private road? Or is it, it has to be in our approval, I believe. It's like for approval. Yeah, so we're authorizing him to apply no, that, which is- You're approving, possible. you're actually approving, approving the name of the you're road. You're approving the yeah. name of the road. Here. Yeah. And then after you've approved it, he yeah. automatically can, he's all, he's already authorized as your E91 person to do uh -huh. that. Yeah, so I think he it has to go need. through us. Yeah, yeah that's what that. I was saying. I, I think we're using diff different language okay. to say the, the same thing. I'll say it again. Okay, I was <laughs> I was suggesting that we authorize the zoning administrator to apply the name Wyvern Road Way, Wyvern Way. I think they're saying that we have to approve that before they apply. It. Right. Correct. Yeah, but we, we are approving it in that we're authorizing him to do it. But if you guys don't like that language, I'm not we'll sure just I like approve that it. Language. Okay. I think that we need to say straightforward. We approve the name. Okay. Okay. Scott, so, are you good with that language? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I'll second the motion. We have a second. So, what, what's, what's the motion? One more time. To approve the. Uh, to approve the name Wyvern Way be applied to the. Wyvern. Yeah. Tree. The, tr the drive behind 170 tr Cherry Tree. Yeah. The, the private road. Yeah. The private road at 170 Cherry Hill. Just a quick question. You have to get that up to a standard, don't you? That private road. The standards for private roads. They've. No, there's a lot of information in their DRB that yeah, yeah. okay. says what there they need to do. Specs. Okay. Specs. Yeah, yeah, we had the road foreman up there. Yeah. We had everybody up there. We had the fire Sorry, chief. Up oh, there. right. That's the thing. Right? We had yeah. lawyers up there. Yeah. We had the entire DRB up there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
Wow, okay. And we're all up in it. No, no, <laughs> Gotcha, okay. No further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have. They do have it. The motion's passed. Wyvern Way is now in existence. This is the easiest thing about this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, All right. Thank, Thank you, night. Ben. Good luck. Good luck. All right. 645. Authorize town administrators to submit application for energy efficiency conservation grant with Ben McCall and Emily Levin. Now, there, so there's some further wrinkles to this application, correct, that we need to be aware of? Think so. Right, that Jen told me about today. Right, there was a concern with the uh, conflict of interest. Um, Can you guys hear? With a um, okay. uh, collective well, Selena Barton being a member, possibly of the planning commission. Yes. What is I, so? I don't understand. Who who is the person? Selena Barton. She's on the planning commission, but she's also. Um, of the Collective Wealth Foundation, which is um Okay. So she's on the Planning Commission. And this grant is going to be applied for by the town, right? Because Jen actually has to apply for it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you? I mean, they're doing the legwork but you're the one that has to submit it, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. And so how does the Planning Commission play into this? They're, they're the ones that are going to receive the money? No. Her foundation. The Can Foundation I? Collective oh. Well Foundation. There's a concern about a conflict of interest because a person who is an elected official is going to benefit financially. Oh. Right. Oh, but does the Planning Commission have any, any say over this? No, she's also a member of the Energy Committee. Okay. So that's, the that's energy different. Oh, she's not. She's not a member of the Energy Committee. No, she's, she's not. I apologize. Okay. 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 So I'm not sure I see a conflict of interest. Well, I'm trying to figure it out what they're. So, but so, Collective so Way. How is she going to benefit financially? Collective Her, Way. The company consult. What is this company? Collective Well. Collective Well Foundation okay. is going to get $15,000 of the grant oh. to do the work. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So the work that... And she is the founding member of Collective Well Foundation. Okay. And so the hundred, it, it's a, how much is the grant for? 50 to 100? 90,000. 90,000. Okay. And what are they targeting for with the money? Where's that money going, going to go? So uh, the bulk of the funds would be allocated to a company called Block Power, which would be uh, basically doing a, a large scale energy model of the town and developing a program whereby building owners could have sort of a one stop shopping for weatherization or uh, electrification measures. And then $15,000, and these numbers I think still need to be refined, but the idea is that 15000 would go to Collective Well Foundation, which would be doing outreach to the community and per perhaps assisting with the project management of the effort. And I've got you. you can chime in a little bit more if, if necessary. Oh, wait. Okay. So, Carl. So, yeah, so I have the conflict of interest policy in front of me. Right. Uh, Article 4 disqualification says a public officer shall not participate in any official action if he or she has a conflict of interest in the matter of considera under consideration. How is the Planning Commission participating in this grant application? I, I see shaking of head. It's not. Is that true? It's not. To, it's not to my knowledge. Um, the, 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 the closest connection, I suppose, is that the Planning Commission was the entity that recommended the members of the Energy Committee. Yeah, that's, that's pretty dilute. Yeah, that's... So, but you're, you're pushing for this application from the Energy Committee. Not from the planning commission. Yeah, that's correct. The the plan. I, I did inform the planning commission that the energy committee is working on this, but yeah. the planning commission has had no role in the conceptualization or discussion right. of the gotcha. proposal. Got it. Okay. Did Emily want to say anything? That's uh, Emily Levin there. Yeah. Oh, who is that? Um, can you hear me? All right. 
Yes. Hi. Yeah. Sorry, I'm in California <laughs> of all places. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's helpful, I could talk a little bit more about um, kind of how we structured, we're proposing to structure the work um, and why we think it would be helpful to have a local partner such as Collective Well. But I will say that, um, you know, I think we all just are interested in seeing this work happen. So there, you know, were we to need to adjust the strategy and remove Selena, I think we could still do that, but, you know, we have that role specifically because we thought this would be a more effective project if there was somebody who lives in East Montpelier who could kind of coordinate the whole project given the limited you know, staffing that the town has. We wanted to lighten their load and then Block Power is, you know, we have faith that they will do a good job, but they're not based in Vermont. They don't have local connections. I think this outreach is going to be most effective if we have some local trusted messengers. And so Collective Well is sort of filling that intermediary role, leading the townwide local outreach and doing a lot of things that I think would be fairly useful and instrumental for the success of the project. So there, are, if this it turned out this was a true conflict of interest, which it sounds like it it may not be. Um, you know, I think we could construct a workaround, but you know, that's the rationale for having that that role. Okay. Okay. So I don't. I really don't think that's a big concern myself. Um, now, okay. So jumping to the next step. So the we have to do the legwork. Is that correct, Ben? The town administrator is going to be doing the application. And I think there was a question about right. how many hours it was going to take and the hours are going to come out of the whole grant or the grant's going to pay. F I mean, I wasn't quite sure. There was 35 hours mentioned of work that the town administrator is going to do. Is that correct? And where was that, where was well, that going to come from? Yeah, so, so just to be clear, uh, Emily and I are leading the effort to prepare the proposal itself. And of course, we'll be consulting with Jen and others uh, in yeah. doing that. When we met with Jen last week, um, she suggested that the town would not need funding allocated to, uh, to account for her time that would be necessary for the administration of the grant throughout the two-year life cycle of the award. Yeah. That is something that we we could, in principle, write that in, uh, but we could also count that as a, as sort of a, a matching that the town is doing, which would increase the likelihood of yeah. the proposal being accepted. That's um, a better idea. And yeah, so that's that's kind of the background for that. So we've been working with Jen, uh, and we'll continue to work with Jen to try to refine, you know, what her actual role would be in the in the grant management, how many hours that would take over the course of the year. Uh, and then we'd like to count that or the the effective value of that as yeah. matching contributed by the town. And I would add to that we I, I think there's a, a, some flexibility for Jen and and you all to determine the level of effort you think is appropriate and feasible for the town. So, you know, the way the grant application, which I drafted yesterday on the plane right out here. So we now at, at this point have a fairly complete grant application um, that's, you know, just has a few open questions, one of which we're discussing right now that need to be resolved. Um, you know, we it's written that Jen would serve as the kind of overall program administrator, like highest level administrator. There are certain things the town has to do, like the literal submission of the invoices and the reports. But the idea is that um, the that collective well, Selena would serve as the kind of day-to-day -day operations program manager, would schedule the meetings, would kind of coordinate block power. We would have members of the energy committee and potentially other interested volunteers, um, you know, unpaid serve as an advisory committee to provide some additional guidance and oversight. So that would provide another set of eyes. And then what I was picturing for kind of ongoing management would be, um, you know, Jen plus Selena plus a block power contact plus maybe one volunteer from the energy committee would meet, you know, every other week or once a month, whatever they determine is necessary. And that's kind of pretty much it for Jen. Um, they might be, you know, there might be an occasional request for some specific 
partnership around a specific piece of outreach, but there's not, the town doesn't have to deliver any of the actual work that would all be done through Collective Well and through Block Power. Well, that sounds okay. I mean, I know that there's a lot of paperwork involved with grants and a lot of documentation of where the money goes. So hopefully uh, Collective Well or you folks will be doing that. I mean, I think Jen can do some of it, but I know there's a lot of paperwork involved with it. Especially, I think that what you're talking about is giving out sub-grants to individuals to do weatherization and such like. Is that correct? I mean, $2,500 or 3000 or is that how that works? No, the only sub-grants would be to Collective Well and Block Power. And then Block Power may, in and of itself, have its own separate financial relationship. But Block Power is, is yeah, we won't be directly funding through subgrants individual homeowners. This grant actually uh, doesn't allow funding for installation of measures. So what it pays for is this very crucial kind of project coordination, contractor management role to kind of go in figure out what the multifamily buildings need, pull in the relevant contractors, kind of oversee the whole thing, pull in. There's a, a lot of kind of new and existing incentives that are coming together. So it's sort of prime time for incentives from st the state and federal. So pull that all in. If somebody wants to take advantage of their lease model as kind of a financing option that can help make the economics work, they can take advantage of that. But the town wouldn't be directly funding measures in individual homes um, and in fact that's not an allowable this this is federal funding but it's flowing through the department uh, vermont department of public service specifically um, like to help small towns like ours so they have significantly streamlined this thing to make it manageable because it's for little towns in vermont hmm. okay all right. Part well, of that was, yeah, <laughs> if, if they did allow it in installation, you, you, we would have had to comply with like Build America, Buy America, Davis-Bacon, and all sorts of other federal things that are a huge pain. So um, that's, I think, why that was not an eligible expense. Okay. What are we going to say, Carl? Yeah, I'm just wondering how we know anything is actually going to happen in terms of uh, facts on the ground with this, if this grant doesn't include any money for installation? Do we have people lined up with multifamily homes who've said, yes, we want to participate and we're going to, we have the money ourselves or we're going to get it incentives or how do you know? I mean, I think the true answer is that we, we don't know. What we are hoping to do is that we have, we make like a concerted push to bring in, um, I mean, part of this is testing the model. Block Power has been, kind of created this model to really support upgrades for multifamily and commercial buildings in other, they've done this in other cities and towns. Um, they have a similar project they're doing in Peterborough, New Hampshire. So part of this is testing the model and figuring out what is it really gonna take. And I, you know, the Ener Energy Committee, I think concluded that this was a worthwhile thing to test. We aren't 100% sure it'll work, but it, it sure would be great to get something in here that would upgrade our multifamily buildings, which are, you know, a lot of affordable rental housing disproportionately in our village centers and are in dire need of support. Um, and like I said earlier, this there are a lot of new incentives for energy upgrades through various federal funding tax credits, state programs. So this is kind of prime time to like make a big push and make people aware of things. Um, I, I should also I should also mention that Block Power's uh, entire scheme is based on no upfront cost to building owners. So they have their own financing, uh, they have their own capital that they have access to, and they implement these measures as a, as a lease for a building owner. So a building owner would sign a 15 year lease with no lien on their building, and they would just basically pay off, pay that lease over the course of 15 years. Uh, which funds the energy efficiency improvements or electrification actions. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. All right. Well, we probably should move on, but uh, what do you think, Jen? Is this something you can handle? Yeah. Helping out with the application? Mm -hmm. All right. I think we should probably just let it happen. Sounds, sounds a little shaky, but... Maybe something happened positive. 
I mean, we're not really putting much money at risk ourselves. We just have our account right. administrator. Yeah. We're throwing them under the bus, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So What's that? Go ahead. I'll make a motion to authorize the town administrator to submit the application for energy efficiency and conservation grant with Ben McCall and Emily Levin. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Thank you for the time you put into this, and Thanks we'll see what happens. Much. Yeah. Enjoy California, North, obviously, North, obviously Northern California. It will be, we'll be interested to see the progress. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we have a really strong energy committee and we're committed to really keeping an eye on, on this thing and seeing if we can make something out of it if it is funded. So, um, right. you know, thank you for your vote of confidence. And, and um, yeah, you can see it. It's actually quite cold here, which I'm finding refreshing after the weather in East Montpelier recently. So thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thanks for having a robust committee. I hope you have a more relaxing plane ride back to Vermont, Emily. <laughs> um, yeah, one would hope, but it's a long shot. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, so the next item is dirt roads and future roads discussion in Sanders Circle with Ron Cox. Yep, I see Guthrie's on it. Uh, what? So what's what are we discussing? Not, uh, we're not discussing the bridge, or are we? So we did get two quotes for I the see. bridge. Mm -hmm. Cold water bridges um, and CCS construction. Yep. So is that something that we're discussing at this agenda item? Mm -hmm. The bridge? Right. I think it's both. The roads, the future roads, and, um, and the bridges. Okay, so the bridges would be instead of the culvert that we've been working at, or the, or is this something that would go in place so we could fix the road down so below? This mm -hmm. was a temporary fix. We yeah. were going to get a temporary bridge from Sven right. from the state, but then they ran out due to the 2024 flood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we were looking for alternatives. So then we could have a bridge for the winter for the residents, mm -hmm. and then. Um, also, Guthrie recommended to have a bridge there uh, for the winter, yeah. and one that we could get a plow across as well. Yeah. So then I called about 14 different vendors to try yeah. to see if we can uh, recommend vendors. Um, and then these two quotes came back for Sanders Circle. Yeah. Because that one's totally wiped out that culvert there. Yeah. But also the one below right. is wrecked from the last flooding. Right. Shop. The fix that they did last year now has got to be repaired. Right. Right. And got through was thinking this would be a good idea because then they could close that part of the road or something and fix it. The corner of the moon. Right. So the residents, they have, uh, they can go the reservoir route out yeah. Yeah. or that way with the two blown culverts. Yeah. So the reservoir uh, has a potential for flooding. Mm -hmm. If it gets bad, if the flooding gets bad and raises mm -hmm. to the road level, and then the other way out has two blown culverts. Yeah. So that's the concern there. Yeah. So the other thing is, though, the 150 or 190 or whatever it was, that's not reimbursable by FEMA, or is it? So I was. Should be. What's that? That should be. It should be. That's my understanding. Okay, but we still have to fix it permanently. We still have to spend half a million dollars on after we take out the bridge, correct? Right. The bridge is not permanent. FEMA agreed. That's that. also FEMA. All right, okay, so the town's not going to be really on the hook, but the town's going to upfront the money, the 190000 mm -hmm. and then the half a million dollar fix after you take out the bridge. So, yeah, the... So once we go out to RFP on the actual structure, the permanent structure on Sanders Circle? Yes. Once we have awarded that contract to a vendor and we have a set number, we can submit that to FEMA and they'll reimburse us like 50% right up front. Okay. So there's far less out of pocket time. It's not like you're gonna be waiting forever on it. Yeah, that's on the permanent fix. Okay, but we haven't applied, we have not applied for that yet for the permanent fix.
we haven't went out to RFP on it. See, right. So that's not likely to happen this year, or is it? If we put an RFP out tomorrow, both of these both of these vendors, um, CCS and Cold River um, Bridges, both of them thought that if we had a structure available, they could get it in before plowing season hit. So before November first, oh, which is one of those catch twenty twos. Do you put? Do we cross our fingers and? hope that the rest of the horn of the moon doesn't go out in the time that it takes to put a new structure in which that's RFPing it and then actually getting it here and getting it installed that's a lot of time yeah but the permanent structure won't happen this year correct no no he's saying it could happen yeah both we... of these vendors said they had crews that they thought they could put on those jobs on that job on the Sander Circle permanent structure this year, if it, with all the parts and pieces were available, and they Which, said the the arch that we were talking about would be available, they 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 think that would only be possibly a few weeks out itself, possibly a month at the max. So it sounds like we should do the RFP immediately and not worry about the bridge. I think that comes back to making sure that engineers have a set of plans that are ready to go out for a request. Do we have those plans? So I, what I had for a set of plans, which was what was approved by the select board to install, it's more like a rough draft. I mean, it gives you all the numbers of how many, of what the structure is going to be. And then most everyone knows how many yards that's going to be moving around material and backfilling and all of that. Um, so it might be checking in with, that one's DeWolf, correct? Yes. So checking in with DeWolf yeah. ASAP. DeWolf. Getting it yeah. refined enough so we can put in an RFP. Right. As soon and as possible. Then, yeah. The That's catch with that is if you do have an event between now and then, there's a chance Horn of the Moon's going to be gone. And much like, much like Jennifer's saying, there's a chance that that area down there would be fairly stranded if the water came all the way up like it did last year, especially. Okay. Yeah, so Carl. Could could you talk more about that, Guthrie? Where are the vulnerable parts of Horn of the Moon Road in case of... Uh, so if you leave, if you come off Route 12 in Middlesex and go across the Wrightsville Dam, yep. as soon as you drop down off the dam and start to go into the woods, yep. the water right there was about four feet deep last year on the road surface. Okay. And, and it got deeper before it started to get shallower. <laughs> Which is why all that work is yeah. when I, I drive that a, all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of crumbling on the side, so yeah. you're kind of left yeah. a single lane at points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that just happened mm -hmm. July 10th, this past July 10th. Correct. Mm -hmm. It washed out, so now it's a narrow road. Mm -hmm. And he's saying it's vulnerable, something could happen. We don't know. You know, it's like a crapshoot. Because the bridge could go in fairly quickly, is what you're saying. Correct. And yeah. the, the bridge could go in. It, they said with approval, it could be in possibly two weeks out. Same thing. The, they have the bridge. Both of them have a bridge available in their yard right now. Wow. Um, different bridges, but same outcome. So we could take the risk and say, we'll put out, you know, go to DeWolf, get the RFP together, keep our fingers crossed. We can do it by November 1st and not worry about the bridge. But then we could get a deluge, right. you know, in two weeks, and Correct. it washes out Horn of the Moon, and you're like, oh shit, we should have put it in the bridge. Yeah. Wow. So the other option, so kind of a third one, seems like it'll be a little bit backwards to some of us, I'm certain, is you put the temporary bridge on Sander Circle, and you don't put it out to RFP yet. And you put Horn of the Moon out to RFP first. Then the long term temporary bridge can stay on Sander Circle until Horn of the Moon is properly fixed. And that's right. probably gonna involve a brand new structure. Uh, the, like I say, uh, the people from the state have been there and looked at it, it's on their list to report to FEMA. But the whole, this whole declaration this year is super slow compared to last year. Okay, so if we did that, then the RFP we're putting down on Horn of the Moon, that's not gonna get, anything's not gonna happen down there till next year for sure. The, what I would recommend would be if we would be more or less take out the eight foot culvert that's left there right now and create stream bed until they're ready to put a permanent fix in. And Actually so remove, remove the rest of it so it would be 
more or less dead end right there. So you'd have, we'd have to turn around at like Phil Bushy's driveway. That would be the dead end. Yeah. Before you, go, you drop down over that steep section. You go around the bridge. Yeah. So you would this, just. Go ahead. Go ahead. That would just mean doing a little bit more work to Sanders Circle, bringing that up to where two cars could comfortably meet on it the whole way. And then that would be the long-term detour in theory yeah. um, to Route 12. Yeah. So thinking about keeping the temporary bridge in for a longer time, the CCS <clears throat> constructors bid includes a one month rental of the bridge. And then after that, it's $5,000 per month. I can't see right. in the Cold River bridges what the effect of on the cost to us is of keeping the bridge in place for longer period of time. Is, is I, anyone... I, I no. saw that that wasn't in there as well. Okay, so um, was, was there something in system. what they responded yeah, to uh, from the town oh, yeah. that this would have led them to assume that it was only going to be a month or something when they put together the bid? Maybe it's, maybe there is no rental. It, they make it sound like it's a one-time, like yeah. a lump sum. That's right. what it looks like to me. So you say one lump sum, mm -hmm. and that's it. And that's it. I kind of like that. Okay, it but makes the... for less paperwork. Same thing going back to FEMA. I mean, at, at that point you have, and I that one is Cold River was one fifty nine, correct? Correct. Yes. And they also uh, at one fifty nine, they don't have um, neither one of them actually put anything in there for the removal. I'm assuming the one fifty nine is the removal and recovery of materials and such too. So. It says removal. It says removal. Oh, it yeah. did say okay. All right, I missed that when I was reading through. Cubic yards, it sounds pretty good, actually. C CCS is local. Cold River, what's that? Yeah, CCS yeah. would be Morrisville area and Cold yeah. River's out of Waffle, New Hampshire. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that, I, I think maybe we were talking past each other. Um, Guthrie, I don't see anything in uh, Cold River bridges for removal of the temporary bridge. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, that's oh. I. I didn't see anything there about removal. On I thought that's what it. Well, and that's. that's I, I'm assuming both of them have no extra yeah. cost for the removal yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to clarify that. Um, as no, wait, as... wait. Except that is a list of the following is excluded or provided by others. Removal, return of Acro Bridge. So their scope includes oh. the first list. Right. And not the second list. Yeah. Not right. Second. Yeah. Okay. No removal. Yeah. Oh, it says Acro Bridge Billings di direct to town. Does Acro own the bridge and will they be charging us 5000 or something a month? Guess we got to find that out. Yeah. Jim, yeah, he's really easy to get a hold of for the most part anyway. Uh, he's answered every time I've talked to him so far. Um, uh, I could get that info tomorrow morning. Yeah, I think we need to know more about the costs of everything under the following is excluded or provided by others. Okay. So, and we don't know if FEMA's going to pay for this, right? The Kim, I'm going to get her last name wrong. I believe it's Kanarecki. Um, she, she said that there'd never been a temporary, that she knows of, there's never been a temporary bridge during a disaster that didn't get paid for by FEMA. And she's with the state of Vermont. She's not with FEMA. She seems to know more about FEMA than most FEMA employees. Okay. So the other question I have is down on the, on the, um, Horn of the Moon repair, well, replace, I guess at this point, the eight foot culvert or whatever's going to happen down there. We do not have any surety FEMA's going to do anything about that because they haven't declared it a disaster. <coughs> this is a different event. At the, correct. At the state level, they declared the emergency, put together the declaration and sent it to DC. And I haven't heard that that's been signed in DC yet. Wow. So that's... Well, okay. So but... how long would you envision from the time we Let's say we went with a permanent fix till it was completed. Well, how long does the RFP take? I mean, well, he said by November 1st that it could be. He right, thinks right. Right. I, said the I think we're going to find the similar issues with 
putting out to RFP, either it's going to be someone that no one's ever heard of, or it's going to be one of these bigger companies that's readily available. And they can throw a crew together to come do it fairly quick. So what do you what would you recommend, Guthrie, of the options that you presented to us? I I don't want to get stuck another year without another winter without a bridge. I really thought we could get the permanent structure in there. And I feel like at this time, the important part is to have one safe route out from the back of Wrightsville Dam. And in theory, we have a half of a road that's shaky leaving there right now. I mean, yeah. the only way we could really help the Horn of the Moon down right, right at Sanders Circle would be to take the guardrails off the upstream side and try to widen the road a little bit more to get traffic oh. away from the washed out edge. Yeah. So you think we should just do the bridge? If we do the bridge, I think we should consider holding off on the permanent fix on Sanders Circle until Horn of the Moon. It, it would buy us time. So we could say once we have a disaster declared by the feds, uh, so FEMA would be there. Um, I don't know how they're not, I, I don't understand how it's taking so long this year compared to last year. Um, so once that's declared, that's a theory still that it's going to happen in most everyone's opinion, um, that we would do Horn of the Moon first. That way you could just be closed. They could do the work there, why it's closed. Then once that's opened up permanent, we pull the, yeah, the bridge on Sanders Circle and do the permanent fix there. Right. Okay. So, I think there's one. I think that you would have to talk to FEMA soon if we want to pull the trigger on the bridge to make sure they are going to pay for it, because all the surety you have is from the state, Ken right. or whatever the lady's name was. So, we'd have to have a meeting with FEMA ASAP, and then you could pull the trigger on the bridge, and Ooh. I guess that's it. I'm sorry, for clarification, yeah. are we talking about the bridge on Sanders Circle or a bridge on Horn of the Moon? Sanders Circle. Thank you. Okay, so, and the other thing is, by putting the bridge in, are we jeopardizing the funding that we would get from FEMA for the permanent fix, which is where the bridge would be? No, nope, that's, that wouldn't, I know for a fact that wouldn't be, the okay. only thing that would you know, you'd jeopardize the 30 month time limit, that's where you'd get caught. Right, that's because we're at thirteen right now. Thirteen months. Wow. Another year is twenty-five months. Wow. Yeah. So it'd have to happen more or less the end of summer twenty-six. You would be running out of time. End of summer twenty-five. Twenty-five. You'd be running out of time. Yeah. Sorry. Twenty-five. Three, sorry. Four. I was thinking budget twenty-six. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not thinking budget, I'm just thinking time. Six, six months ahead of time, that's all. So what is, okay, yeah. C can we check in with Ron, who came here to talk about this? I, one thing I just want to be clear about, to make sure that I got the order of things, the order of things would be a temporary bridge first on Sander Circle, and then when all, everything, all the ducks are lined up for Horn of the Moon, there would be, that would then, um, get fixed, and then the temporary bridge at Sanders Circle would disappear, and the permanent fix would be there. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it does sound like a lot of cramming together for time. Yeah. Because we've got to, I mean, the permanent fix on Four of the Moon was going to have to happen before the permanent fix on Sanders Circle, and we're coming up against a timeline there. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, and we don't even have a disaster declared or any, anything else done for Horn of the Moon. We have nothing in place for Horn of the Moon, nothing. No disaster, no hydraulic study, no nothing. So the other, so if you wanna plan on not having it done, the other thing we can do, which yet again, FEMA would pay for it, I, as long as this declaration happens, is we could put the eight foot culvert back in, do a very temporary fix on Horn of the Moon. You could open it up to full width on Horn of the Moon and that would be a lot like a lot of the repairs we did last year, not a fix. A fix is a new structure, a repair is putting it together, what already failed, in my opinion. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So right. that's kind of where we're at. I feel like the culvert at Sanders Circle created a, a bit of valving, if you want to call it that, for that culvert below. And when that right. failed last year, now the water's going to do this continually. Even with the right. new structure in there, it's not going to gate the water like the old right. structure did. Yeah, the old one, yeah, forced it down to a smaller stream yep. is what happened. Correct. And now it's just wide open. Yeah. But that's going to happen with the bridge in there, and that's going to happen with the new structure. So Exactly. That's why I'm saying that anything you do on Horn of the Moon should be temporary, no matter if it's putting back the old culvert. Yeah. It, it should be considered a temporary or emergency fix anyway. Yeah, so next year, if we put the temporary bridge in, we're going to have to do two projects. You're going to have to do Horn of the Moon permanent, and then you're yep. going to have to do the Sanders Circle permanent. And that would have to be done before the fall, before November. Right. Or else you're bumping up against the time. Would it be possible to do a temporary fix on Horn of the Moon? That's so what I'm can. saying. That I, we could bring the old culvert back up there and do a temporary fix on it. The downfall is that's out of pocket cost until they declare an emergency still. And that's a lot of cost. I'm out. just concerned that we're going to run up against that Me too. 30 month timeline. Me too. And we're going to lose that half a million dollar funding. Yeah, I am too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, agree. That's, that's my big concern. The um, only way you would get around that is if we did that, you know got our FP out as soon as possible for the permanent structure right. and not do the bridge. That, and then that's, we're, that's, that's right. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. Is there something we can do temporarily down there in but, the meantime? Yeah. Oh, well, we could do that if we had to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that would... That would be the backup plan. If, that's a, if, 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 if all out. If all the, out. Yeah, if the permanent fix if, doesn't happen. Right. Right. We could do a, a fix down there, a temporary fix. I mean, I, I know. I, I, I just think yeah. we're, we're playing Russian roulette with that 30. I don't see how you can do two big projects like that next year. And the way everything moves slower than that. Right. What do you think, Guthrie? It's, it's all Russian roulette because the weather is just that, the weather. I mean, we're at the beginning of hurricane season. Right. So it, it, we could, it, by the end of next week, Horn of the Moon could be completely gone. And then, I mean, that's right. just the weather. That, that's that's my everyday life. <laughs> right. Uh, that's right. Uh. Hmm. The only mm -hmm. other thing that we could do potentially, which is yet eating up more time, is we do jump on getting the RFP for Sanders Circle and then contact these two contractors again and see if they could possibly do something like a 120-foot bridge on Horn of the Moon until next year. Oh, do that way you're sense. making progress on both of them that way. Because what you would end up digging the eight-foot culvert out that's on Horn of the Moon and just put a bridge over it. You'd stone line the banks, much like what that paper reads right now that you guys are looking at for a temporary bridge on Sanders Circle. Right. Right. Jeez. <laughs> That's a tough one. It's a catch-22 area over there. Yeah. Huh. Well, next week's going to be okay, so we don't have to worry about next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's only going to rain hard for 20 minutes. <laughs> the remnants of a hurricane are coming around the coast. Right yeah, now. it's only Friday, Saturday, something, Monday or something. Yep. So how much would it cost to buy a helicopter for all the residents <laughs> over there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I kind of lean towards doing the permanent fix on Sander Circle. That's... And just get easier and get it okay. done. I think if Jennifer and I work on that tomorrow a little bit, we have a meeting anyway, so we could potentially get a little bit of chitter chat about reaching out about just doing the permanent fix too. Yeah, ASAP. Or, yeah. We'll get a hold of DeWolf first thing. So one thing I want to check with Jen and Guthrie with you. I thought that the engineering firm was um, recommended that the permanent fix, there wasn't time to do it this season because of certain restrictions around when the work could actually be done. So I'm
they've lifted a lot of the restrictions and that was why you saw banks being rip wrapped in December and January this past winter. Um, they've decided that they need to get this stuff fixed and done as long as the weather permits productive work schedules. Uh, the state's being really, really flexible about when you can be in the water now. Um, it's more or less you need to get the work done because there's so much work to be done. Yeah. So is everyone on board with a permanent fix, if we can implement as quickly? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so, too. And where was it left the Born of the Moon uh, road in that situation? Was it that, was that going to be a temporary replaced or, you know, the, the culvert that's there and do a temporary fix or leave it unfinished? Leave it. I think that kind of depends on the timeline for the permanent fix on Sander Circle, but there are some things we could do on a temporary basis just to get it, get it by if we have to. Either take down the guardrails and make the road wider on the white right side, or put in the culvert that was there before and make the road wider. So we have that option. Um, I think that's what we got to look at. Can I just ask one more question of uh, Guthrie? Guthrie, um, yeah. the... the um, I mean, the Horn of the Moon seems to be a unique area in the town in terms of water issues. And, you know, you know I've been in the area for 46 years, and, and I, the, the, the road is disappearing. I mean, there's... Guthrie, you can tell me whether I'm wrong or right on this one, but it just seems like, especially on standard circle in places, it's down to the base. There isn't much to grade. There's a culvert that's bare, that's broken, that's sticking out. Um, in one place on Sander Circle, and I just wonder whether, whether you know, what are you thinking about as a plan or approach to dealing with the fact that that whole area, the roads just seem to be degrading? Yeah, the Sander Circle definitely could use some gravel, some resurface, some berm removal, um, all things that we usually go through and do like we would do the majority of Sanders Circle over a matter of a week or two, maybe three weeks. Uh, it it hasn't been a priority as of the last year to more or less 18, 20 months, in all honesty, the year before that even. Um, we, we haven't been doing a lot of just plain general maintenance unless something actually jumps out in the road. So that's, that's why you're not seeing a lot of activity over there. Um, and I know that's your only way in and out. I understand that. And how about grading? <laughs> Do you know someone that wants to run a grader a lot of hours <laughs> when it's not raining? <laughs> um, hopefully, the next three days, we will get a lot of grading done. Uh, that's the plan. I'm going to have the grader out the next three days, and we'll be able to cover a lot of territory. Um, okay. And it's it's going to be a little bit spread out, but not terrible. There'll be some over towards North Montpelier, and there'll be some up on Horn of the Moon side of things, so. Anything else? Thank you. So we put out this RFP, you said that when you talked to both these companies, they thought they could put crews together. Could we make sure that it's, that RFP went to them right off? That, it, yeah, we could make that available to them in theory, the same time that we put it out to everybody else, so. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many others you'd get. Like like Jennifer was saying, when you reach out to 14 vendors and only two of them even really get back to you, I mean, right. that's a telltale sign of how, every, how busy everyone is. I understand. Okay, I think we've got kind of an action plan. Yeah. All right. I don't think we need a motion, or do you want a motion to do the RFP? Sure. I mean, just to kind of get that in place so we don't have to have a... Sure. A motion to authorize the town administrator to put together an RFP yeah. for a permanent repair to the blown culvert on Sanford yeah. Circle. And we've already approved that. Can you say it again because they're talking over here? Yeah. Uh, the motion is to authorize the town administrator to issue an RFP or do... Sure. Okay. Do we, do we want to look at the RFP before we... I'm not. Uh, I don't care. Okay. I think we need to get it out. Okay. For me. That's kind of why I put it out. I mean, the, right the, when you get the RFP, so you can just send it. Send I think it to he's us still saying his that. motion. Yeah. I can see yeah. It. Yeah. Right. We're just trying to figure out the motion, though. Okay. So, so what we're agreeing to is he's going to make a motion, and then about the RFP, he'll send. He'll she'll send it out to us. Right. Okay. But, so, but so there'll be no delay. 
Right, that's what we're trying to do. We're so trying to streamline. The motion, I think, is to authorize the town administrator to issue an RFP to for a permanent repair on Sanders Circle where the culvert was blown out, pending select board approval of the language via email. And, uh, okay. What? So one thing we might want to add is after consulting with the one. That's. I, I don't usually do anything on the motions, but you may just say R, the RFP to execute the plans or design drawn by Dual for that oh. specific job. Right. Okay. And remember, we did approve that design. Mm -hmm. Right. Correct. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. So it's all approved. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Okay. So you made the motion. I awesome. made the motion. What, what do you have for captured motion? Uh, to authorize the town administrator to issue an RFP for permanent repair on Sanders Circle as designated by DeWolf Engineering. Is that what we're calling this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say repair, but permanent Well, structure. that's what you were saying. Okay, so permanent structure. Is yeah. that what we're saying? Yeah. Now? Okay. Yeah. And... And we don't even, it, then that bit about select board approval, we After. don't need to put that in the, no. the motion either. No. We, we, okay. we understand that we're going to... She's got a problem. Yeah. I'll okay. second that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? I just have one question. Yeah. Uh, can I ask, it, it, will this, this, um, this permanent fix the one of the contractors that has made proposals for a temporary solutions? So is that who's going to actually do the work? When, you, when we go out for RFP, it's a request for a proposal, so you have to do it equally across the board. So it'll go out to a bunch of contractors, and you you'll hear back. Yeah, you, you have to do it. All right. Okay. Um, so no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Thank you. There's a lot of discussion. Nice, Guthrie. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Uh, discussion regarding Hudson House and Byron property possible motion. Uh, so I was going to suggest a couple things about that. We don't really have a survey that we can find, and we need to keep looking. Um, and I remember when Bruce and I looked at this all over, we had a hard time finding a survey for the old town uh, structure that was there the town lot mm -hmm. for the old town hall. Uh, so I think that we're going to have to get a survey made. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to keep looking to see if we can find something in the archives in there uh, of the surveys perhaps that were done around it. I was going to say, maybe one of the other properties has been surveyed. Right. Well, I'm, I think they probably have, but Bruce spent a lot of time looking this all over. And we had a hard time trying to figure out what was what. Okay. So at some point, we may have to get a survey of it. Okay. Um, and then at that point, we can even redraw some lines if we want to. Okay. okay. The other thing is we probably ought to clean it up. Um, we probably ought to reach out to the guy that does our mowing here and maybe do some mowing around it and get the tractor removed that's there or ask us because I think that's his. And just just to make things look better. Mm -hmm. They gotta and be able to look at it. There's there's some right. trimming that needs to be done in branches. Yes. yes. The trees. I think so. Yeah. Look a lot. I better. mean, you gotta get it so it's presentable. That's what you just exactly. Said. That's what you just yeah. said. Yeah. So that's just my thought. Yeah. But the survey is really important. So I think that um, we need to work on either actually have Rosie look for more surveys of properties around, looking. and also the town. I mean, man, we found references to So that used to, to be it. the old town hall, is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. Okay. The town hall property is there, and we found references to it. We were trying to find a survey when Bruce and I were looking into it yeah. years ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There might be one that's unrecorded somewhere. I've got yeah. stacks and stacks of maps yeah. that are huh. not officially recorded. Okay. So. we got to find something. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we need to do a few things before we like, put it up for sale. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody on board with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I don't think we really need to do anything no officially. Oh, no, I don't think so right now. We good? Okay. Okay. So in our packet, we have the town garage documents for proposed bound vote. 
Approved resolution certificate, warning and ballot. Approved declaration of official intent. Uh, I looked them all over. They look like they're pretty official. The resolution certificate needs to say that I'm an appointed clerk, not an elected clerk? Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys got that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good catch. And then this is the good stuff. Get that out of there. Um, and I guess you're saying about the five million, just leave it there and... I was just hoping to soften the blow by a few hundred thousand, but you guys don't think it's important that we don't have to. Well, do I don't. It. I don't think we can wait. Because no, I know. I'm hearing you say that, right? Well, but the point is, what number you want to put there? Yeah. yeah. And we know off the top of our head that we had this ARPA funds that we used for something else that we could cycle in some capital reserve funds for. Can we get it under five million with that? Can we do what? Can we get the total bond under five million? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Well, there's also a lot of money in there for paving, et cetera, et cetera. And that was an op that was a timeline on the paving that we went with Mike Garan's estimate of seven years and yeah. this and that. So, you know, what's going on is the paving is lasting a lot longer. You know, right. like cherry tree has been over ten years. Yeah. So, you know, there's some opportunities in our capital reserve to perhaps soften the blow to the yeah. taxpayers, is yeah. all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So and that would be my approach because this is a lot of money. Should we say four nine? If we do that, we need to change all of these documents, so I can't have you sign them tonight. Oh Jesus! We can. We That's can do okay. That. We can do it. Yeah, for we the can sake do of getting it. I have the documents, so yeah. I'll just need to get you guys all in here to to sign it separately. I'm around. We're around. I don't know. It's not that much money, like you were saying. So. I don't know, maybe it doesn't matter. There's a psychological difference between well, four and nine. And I think there is too, plus. but you know, I don't know. You know. The other thing is we don't have in here is the effect that's going to be on the tax rate, but we're going to have that for our first it did. meeting. We yeah. have the information. Oh, okay. Where is that? That's in my packet here. Uh, yeah. Postcard, wasn't it? It was on the postcard. Oh, that's yeah. on the postcard? Yeah. Oh, good. That's cool. Yeah. So I didn't well, look at You'll notice that we added a date in November because statutorily we have to have an informational right. yep. meeting within 10 days of the vote. Yep. Okay. So we took oh. away the October 26th and oh, okay. November 2nd. Oh, so it was closer to the vote. <laughs> right. Because oh. when I saw that, that sure. date, I said it's 12 days out, that's not going to work. Good job. Oh, good. Good, good, good. good. Nice. Okay, so I didn't see the postcard because I guess I didn't look. But. Yeah, it was a, it Did was somebody email. have it? It was an email. It was an email, yeah. I saw the email, but... Was that like 11 cents, Rosie? That's about what I was thinking. I thought 10, but... I, I didn't do the, do the, do the postcard. It's kind of been a, a group effort around here to just kind of get things oh. rolling here. So. Maybe I can find it on my phone. I want to say it was 11 cents. It's 11 cents. Yeah. yeah. 11 cents or... I think that's... Yeah, I did the rough math. It was 10, so... Yeah. Yeah, if you went 20 years... If you went 20 years or 30 years. Okay, so it's 11 cents and 20 years? No, I think 11 cents and 30 years. 30 years. 13 cents and 13. Okay, okay. 13 okay. and 20. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good information we have to pass on. Yeah. Big so, gifts. So, my only other thought, and, mm -hmm. and this is just me talking as a clerk because I'm not a resident here, but. We're assuming that five million one twenty-five is actually going to cover all the costs that we're expecting. We're it's not. rounded up. There's that's a contingency right. factor okay, in so there. That, so yeah. that is a conservative. There, there's, 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 there's a twenty percent fudge factor. Okay. And there's several hundred thousand we could get um, back from the solar insulation or right. energy. Okay. We, we had that conversation. Okay. So, so there, we, there's we, a no, lot. No, no, you weren't here. We were. Yeah, that's that's it makes sense. I just want to make sense that if we're make, if we're changing the numbers that. We don't regret we, it. I don't know if we should change the numbers. I'm just putting it out there. You could save four million five hundred thousand, and you'd probably be okay because you could take the money out of your capital reserve and cover your ass if you had to. I mean, honestly. That, you guys just tell me what you wanted to say. I know. I'm just, just I'm just numbers. throwing it out there. I mean, yeah. In theory, it could be four and a half million. It could right. be four point two. We, we we had that discussion because we hired a company right. to to do to, the numbers. Uh -huh. Well, and to make it as efficient as possible right. for us. So that we don't get hosed. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't get caught in their we, we, they're, 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 watch, they're watching us. Yeah. yeah. We hired them to make sure that we're protected. Yeah. And we get the fair, fairest, whatever. So this this is the highest number that it could. It be. is the highest. Right. Are we wise to put it out like that or not? 
Maybe we should make it under five. Wouldn't be a bad idea. I, I'm so, I, yeah, I would be support. a little more palatable. I guess so, yeah. Cause I mean, we really want it to be palatable, folks. I mean, you know, right. it's, a, it's a... I mean, if it doesn't pass, then... It doesn't it's matter. Matter. It's psychological. I know. People do round four things point over five nine to the pass, and then things under five to the low. Yeah, like, some people, like, they see over five, and they think, oh, it's close to ten. Under five, they think, oh, it's close to ten. Well, we know. It's semantics. But... 4.95, how's that? Sounds good. Sounds good. Are we saying 4.95? Yes, Yep. Okay. And, and, and we're just saying, make sure they change. The we have the money in our capital reserves to cover. Postcard. I'm sorry? Tax rate numbers on postcard need to change. To reflect 4.95. So we'll need to get the bond bank to reduce I don't, that. Maybe I'm looking at a different postcard, but the postcard that I got emailed, 7331-24 forum postcard, that doesn't have any tax rate info. No, it's the PowerPoint. Oh, it's the, the power. Oh, it's the PowerPoint. Oh. It's not on the postcard. Okay. So it's not on the postcard. I didn't think it was. I didn't really see it. But it's like okay. it's in the PowerPoint that we're going to be presenting on yeah. our next meeting. Right? Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll send this back to the bomb bank tomorrow morning and let them know. And the postcard. We want a new. Sure. We want a new one. When's the postcard going to go out? Um, it's in the process of being printed right now because we wanted to make sure that Great. Sure. that new date was on. So it's going to be mailed out within a day within or two? Maybe, yeah. Great. I mean, we put in the order for it Thursday? Yeah, last week, Friday. Yeah, so we could yeah. go out yeah. and, can, and can, no. we, <laughs> can we also, um, you'll put it out on Front Porch Forum because, I mean, sometimes if I don't get mail for a week. That's her, Jennifer, that's her department. You'll put it out on Front Porch Forum and any other... It's too late for the signpost. Does it pay right. to put it? I'm just, yeah. I'm concerned because there's literally sometimes I don't get mail for an entire week mm. on North Street. Um, do and we put an ad in the Times Argus? Is that too expensive? It's or the what would you Times suggest? Argus is going to be, well, the informational meetings have to be warned in the Times Argus on okay. specific days. Right. So, but that's not going to happen until. September and October. Okay. Oh. So if you want people to come to your tour of the building on the 18th of this month, I think it's important. We should probably do something soon. And we yes. would like people to come to the meeting in two weeks. Right. Yeah. That's which up is, to the school, is, too. What? It's up at the school. Is it? Okay. Well, yeah. I, we don't know yeah. how many people we're going to get. Hopefully. We hope we get a lot, which means. We couldn't really do it over there because that's not that big. Right. Mm -hmm. I so mean, yeah, you get 20, 30 people that fit we... over there. But... So it's on the website. And then you want to go to the Times Argus? I think right. it should go to the Times Argus. Do you want to do something in the world as well, or do you think the Times Argus is yeah. good enough? <laughs> Times Just Argus. Just asking. Yeah. Times Argus and, and Front Porch Forum? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the postcards mailed out. When are they going to get mailed out? Like I said, in the next day or two. Okay, that's good. Also know that postcard mail is not prioritized, so it takes forever for it to get But you still got two weeks, almost. Yeah. Because our we'll the meeting is on the 19th, right? Our first information Your meeting. tour is on the 18th. Yeah, the day Information before. meeting is on the 19th. Right. And that's up to the school. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we'll have a meeting at the school right after. Just get it done. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a meeting at the school right after what? After the... Information meeting. The, our have. next board meeting. Oh, our yeah, board meeting. yeah, the, Heather's already taken Do we have Zoom out. up there? I mean, all that? She's got that all taken care of. Okay. Because a lot of people may want to Zoom in. Yeah, right. that's all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, so we've got the, she's, we'll have the Zoom stuff mm -hmm. going. Um, Orca is coming. Yeah. So they'll be able to help us so that people can actually hear. Yeah. And they've got the big projector screen in, on yeah. the stage in the gym. Yeah. Great. Oh, good. Good. Again, I don't know if it would be helpful, but if people can't make it to the tour, there are a bunch of videos that Guthrie and I took that do show the closeness of the parking. I'm afraid we're going to get 10 people. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, hopefully it's a different link than you right. said me because no, I couldn't works. open them. It turned out that Google doesn't only work with okay, Google well, addresses, whatever. but I uploaded it to the town drive. Okay. So that's all in the town okay. Okay. shared cool. um, folder. Okay. So we need to approve some stuff tonight. Right. Pending yeah. the changes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe the motion would be uh, to approve 
I move to approve the resolution certificate, warning, and ballot language with the change of a bond amount to four, up to four million nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. I move to approve the declaration of intent. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. So we're done with that. Thank yeah. you. Okay. We just need to come in and sign something. You know. I'll let you know when I've got it all. It okay. should be any time after tomorrow. Yep. Okay. Tomorrow morning. Okay. Sounds good. good. Thank you. Know, Thank you. And I will update the question in the ballot as well, because that's in the system right, right. now, so it's got to be fixed. Right. Okay. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Good idea. Um, so we're done with the town garage, and the next item is motion to appoint new ZA as the E911 coordinator. So moved. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Uh, approved curb cup application 1105 Galveston Hill Road. We have a copy of that in our packets. It's here. In fact, I used to go back, you know, you might have put it in front porch for him a couple of times. You can put it once and just put Rosie's name, so two different names, just, you know, a few days apart. Oh, or I can do it one one day and she can do it another exactly. day. Exactly. Just okay. get it in a couple of times. Thank you. I can also put a sign up. Since it's not on the ballot, I can put a notice up at the election next Tuesday. Great. So when people are coming in to vote, yeah. they can know that this is happening. And maybe even have some extra postcards just to hand them. Um, I don't know if we ordered. Whatever. We ordered a few extra. Whatever. Print something yeah. out and that'd be great. Yeah. That's another thing. So we actually have two curb cut applications to approve? Is that I'm correct? not sure. I'm looking at that right now. From the same person, but... One is curb cut for small lighting jobs? Yeah. 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 One's One One looks like a... Yeah, it looks like a... Disease, pines, and ash, timber stand improvement, ag use. You don't usually actually put in a curb cut for that. No, not for ag use. Not the, for first, the first one has a culvert installation recommendation. Yeah. The second yeah. one does not. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not, not really familiar with the second form. That's not the one we've used. Do we have anything to say about that? Let me look it up. That's a curb cut point. Mm -hmm. It is, but um, it looks very different than our usual curb cut form. Um, that's, that's the that's one the zoning I've always used. Well, if you look at no, the first, the first one, one the, the first one is a standard one that we work with. Yeah, the other one is a zoning form. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, he, he did it. Yeah, he okay. used the wrong form the first time. Yeah. So because I told him I wasn't sure he needed one. So we should Oh, yeah, you didn't really need one, actually. But these are two different things, aren't they? So we ignore the zoning really. permit oh, application? He wrote curb cut application on but he doesn't really need to apply for that. Okay. Because it's, temp it's a temporary use, actually. It's for an uh, ag use. Yeah. So we Timber can ignore that. Improvement ag use, but, you can just ignore it. Okay. Right. Okay. So forgive but, me, but why does the first one mention a culvert and the second one doesn't? Because the first one is, it has to have a culvert. Oh, okay. Because that's a permanent driveway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course, it says agriculture. So he was doing two right. things. Right. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. So I move to approve uh, access application tw for permit number 24 032 on 1105 Gallison Hill Road. Second. All, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Now the other one. Doesn't have a permit number. No. On the top. Yeah. No. Well, it's not really the right form. I think that they just gave you all of the information. Yeah, they gave us too much. Yeah. <laughs> People do that sometimes, yeah. but I don't. <laughs> I, I was like, I try to stick to the what I need and forget the rest of it. But whatever. I don't know what you want to do with it. Not really an official application. It's, it's temporary. It doesn't need to be approved. I was going to say it's for logging. It doesn't need it. No. 
Let it go. I say just let it go. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. It doesn't have a number. Right? Yeah, it doesn't. So it's like impossible to prove anyway. So. <laughs> the concept is fine. He's trying to give us too much information because he's trying to be a good citizen. But. <laughs> okay. So we're done with that. Motion is set to 2024-25 property tax rate. Uh, which is scary looking. We gotta make sure we sign that um, curb cut application before we leave. I mean, I've got it. I think I have the right copy in front of me. Okay, so what were you saying, Scott, about the tax rate? I think we should fire the people that are going to approve it. Yeah. That would help. That would be the townspeople? <laughs> that would be the townspeople. <laughs> really, they already approved it. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we have much choice. I mean, if you look at the municipal tax rate, it only went up, you know. The municipal tax rate, to me, is reasonable. It's yeah. the education tax. It's an education, but that's irrelevant. So it doesn't. Matter. I know, but 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 at some point they need to wake up and look at the administration because that's where the big problem is. But that's great, but it's irrelevant to the conversation. I understand that. We, we're we're all agree. Just we're, we're all agree with you. <laughs> we, nobody's disagreeing. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the tax rate as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye appears, the ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Uh, so, oh. next thing is motion regarding waiving penalty for late filing of homestead declaration. So that was a big. All right, so. So what are we thinking about that penalty? I guess we do it like we usually do it. Oh, they're saying that some people here didn't have the homestead declaration done yet. You or I don't know who it was. Mm -hmm. That was a just the letter I'll, in here, right? I'll abstain. You abstain, okay. Um, What's the issue here? The Deb said there's a letter somewhere yes. kicking around here. I've got it somewhere. I'm just. Buried in paper. You said that two people should. Two people, uh, two of us, not fire filed our homestead declaration. Is that, is that what she's saying? Yeah, that's Yeah, I've got a letter here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Let's read it. I think I have my file in mine. I guess I have. I don't, even, I don't, I don't, file, I don't file it. <laughs> I don't file it because I don't, I don't do the homestead. So it's the two of you? I don't do the That's income sensitivity thing. So it's the two of you. <laughs> well, I think it's you and you. Me? Yeah. I'm yeah, supposed to I think file something? I've never filed. Yeah. Everyone who lives in a house. Has to file it. It's supposed to but when file it. When, are they, when do we file it? Because. When you, you file your taxes, you file your and, okay, I do it with my taxes. And it could be that people have obtained an extension to get their taxes. I haven't filed my taxes yet. Well, that's why. Yeah, because I always do mine on my taxes. Yeah. 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 Same, same with mine. Yeah. Like I'm working on them now. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. And I always file late. So we'll abstain. I always file on. We'll abstain. Yeah. 
So, so well, it's perceived as a conflict. Oh, I had no idea that. Uh, this is yeah. <laughs> if, if you'd like, if you'd like to re review the, would you like me to Thank review the reasons we've <laughs> asked us in the past? No. It's, it's generally. I'll good. make a motion that we waive the penalties for late filing. Period. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll second. I'll, okay. Any further discussion? So, so I, I, I think it's useful for us to have this in the record. Yeah. So I would like to put that in the record. On point. I would like to read it so that, mm -hmm. that, and I'll send it to you so it will go into the minutes. Uh, but um, the town has chosen to waive the late filing penalty in the past for a number of reasons. One, the penalty only affects those who do file but file late. Those who are required to file but don't file are not penalized if they are not caught. Two, the town's revenues are not affected by whether someone declares a homestead in town or not. Three, it is in the town's interest to encourage accurate information about who is a resident here, and waiving the penalty encourages people to file a homestead declaration, even if it is late. Four, for a time, the state allowed a homestead declaration to remain in effect until the landowner rescinded it. The select board does not see a good reason for reverting to a system requiring filing each year. Board members determined they have seen no new information that would cause a reconsideration of the decision from previous years. So you don't have to file every year? The, there was a, uh, for a few a years. Long, right, I remember that. Have to do right. For a long and, time. You right. To file. And then, right, but now you do. And then now we, you we were upset that they changed that. Yes. So we just right. make a general protest every year. Right. Got it. Yeah. We yeah. protest that they don't have to. We protest that they do have to. Okay. So we don't want to enact a penalty uh, right, against right. on a policy that we don't agree right. with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why would they have to do it every year? Yeah. But that's what you have to do. Yeah. Oh, and Scott hasn't done it because it's tax relief. Yeah. He's, he's well, always... He files extension. He yeah. files extension, I'm which I don't do. I always oh, try to do it my time. Well, I'll get more of the information. Uh -uh. Can I speak? This yeah. is Deb. Sure. Yeah. I was having trouble with my Wi-Fi, so I'm not sure I heard what you said earlier, but are two people recusing themselves because if they vote to waive the fee, then they are voting to waive yeah. if they would have to pay? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And just to be clear, Scott, you're required to file the HS-122, which has nothing to do with the amount of income you have and the rest of your tax return as a separate document. You file it, file it separately, you sign it separately, and it's due on April 15th. There is no extension for that form. Well, I mean, I, I all right. I, I, I don't do my taxes. I have a, my accountant does it, and we do the and I never file on time on April fifteenth. I do file an extension, obviously, and that's yeah. not included. So in other words, I should inform Julie, yeah. my accountant, um, that when I file an extension, I need to file yeah. the homestead. Uh, this is all brand new to me, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I've You're lived here since '09, and this is the first time I have any idea that. That this is what I should be doing. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and I file my taxes. So, have and have you? Did you read the whole thing that there was over seventy eight hundred dollars? I think it was. I don't have it in front of me now. That is yeah. at stake here, and it was basically twenty people that were affected. That would have been affected. Okay. Well, I'll inform my account for next year to file that on file it on by April fifteenth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting that <laughs> new to me after. Since I know. July second of oh nine. I've been I didn't worry taxes. about it because you know, I don't do the I can't do the income sensitivity thing, which right. is, that's important that you okay. file that to get the income right. sensitivity. That, that that form, Seth, you can file with your extension on October fifteenth. It's not necessarily filed with sure. the HS one twenty two. And I think the state tax department has confused things unnecessarily by attaching those two documents to each other, even though they have to be filed. I mean, they Definitely. can be filed separately. Okay. It's, it's a little crazy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then they make it more complicated for us because they keep sending us, every time somebody files like in October 15th when they file again, because they got the extension, even if they filed on April 15th, they send us the HS-122 again, and we have to process the whole thing because it comes into the system. And it's just, you know, a big pain. And I'm not sure that waiving or not waiving solves that problem, but there is $7,800 at stake, so... I just wanted you to know how much money you were talking about before you voted on it. Yeah, no, I, I, 
<laughs> you don't know what you, I mean. I know. I, I could have done it if I didn't know. And but this is a reason that we're a, waiving the penalty, too. It's been 14 years that I've been yeah. doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll, so we'll move I on. have a motion that's been moved and seconded. Yeah. And All I have two people abstaining from this. Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. So we waive the penalty for the reasons that Carl read off. Right. Okay. Interesting. The next thing is motion for recreation board policy change. Um, and we have a huge packet here. I do, anyway. I'm sure everyone else does have this multi-page document mm -hmm. about changing a policy. Cash receipts policy. And is the change to take away the words and, and approved under transaction detail and reporting? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay. So where, where is the change? It's under transaction detail and reporting uh, on page two. Oh, okay. um, gotcha. It's highlighted. The idea is to take away and approved by the board because there are other multiple other uh, approvals. So I move to accept the recommendation of the Recreation Committee to amend the their cash receipts policy by removing the words and approved under transaction detail and reporting. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So back on the other one, it's interesting because Amy seven years should have been reclusing herself if you right <laughs> she, she voted for seven years not knowing that <laughs> not knowing that you you she knows we can find it for seven years she she's a bad person let's just get that on the record wow. Scott I will throw, have, throw, I will, throw her under the bus I will have a strict talk about her when we get home wow <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny that little things the big things that you catch wow okay so um we did that. Now the treasury report. Oh, that's all together with this. That's what I thought. And does everyone have a copy of the preliminary monthly financials? Any red flags, no, Jen, in the financial reports that we're looking at? Um, no. It's in the town. Uh, I think it might only be in your pile. Yeah, I have a big pile. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, uh, I see a lot of check marks here on ending balance. Capital reserve fund. Um, general fund. Anybody have any questions about the treasury report? So once again, under the special accounts, Jen. Yeah, are you looking at? Three hundred. Yeah. Special. So there's three hundred thousand, and then one point six. Yeah. Is that earning any sort of any basis point? So on one of these sheets, I was just looking at it, actually. Um, you look at it on the one on mine. Yeah, I'm looking at... Okay, so the town checking, it was 1.6. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Under special accounts. So it looks like... Oh, under it. special accounts. Okay. Special accounts, I don't I see any interest by it. Is that included if, within? If, if I can... Yeah, uh, please. Just for the education. I think it's... 
think it was earning interest because yeah. we've asked um, Michelle that, and every time she said, yeah, yes. it's it's earning interest. So, it, so you think we should put it on here? Okay. Just include it, please, under the yeah, special accounts. Um, There's two point four that doesn't have any interest rate attached to it. Right. Right. That's the one we're looking at. This one. Right. I think it's just yeah, yeah. not on this report. Yeah, it's the same one. But too. it is earning interest. Which one are you looking at, Scott? Because I'm looking at this one here. Yeah, it's the same one I'm looking at. <coughs> Special accounts. It has contingency fund, capital reserve so fund. So if, if it is account. great. But there's nothing I, I would think that at the very least it should be a CD or a money market. Making it well, may be that this, this is. Just saying it is. So it is. I, I believe it is, but okay. there is also a certain amount of cash that we need to have available for the school bill yeah. that comes mm -hmm. twice a year and that's two point something million yeah. dollars so i know that we had to have some fluidity but i don't Without you should doubt. talk to michelle Without about doubt. that sure when was that when does that get paid it got paid in it was either may or june and yeah. it gets paid in the fall as well after taxes after yeah, yeah. it gets paid in december basically right so this money that we have here does not, that's not going out for school taxes. No. No, that's already been paid. Anyway, they're just, it, it may be earning interest, there's just no. There's not, no right. document. And, it, and, no, if it's, yeah. and if it's in a money market rate, then just put MM. Yeah. Just, right. yeah. I know she's aware of it. She knows this is my pet peeve. Yeah. <laughs> she says, yeah. I know. I know. Okay. I love her. I love her. Just, <laughs> just put something no, there. It's just yeah. disconcerting when it's playing. <laughs> All right, 2.4. Yep. I'll give you an interest rate for 2.4, and I'll pay you less. <laughs> but the money that you wanted to get moved is earning 5.37, right? Remember we talked about this? You've got, it only looks like 268,000 there in that money market account getting 5.37. I thought there was more money in that account. Then it's uh, Northfield Savings Bank money market, number one. Mm -hmm. But we talked about this mm -hmm. at length. Yeah. It was going to make us fifty thousand a year. That's what I remember. But it's not fifty thousand on every million. Right, but there's only two hundred sixty-eight thousand in there, and we've got. Right, and that was my question. Right, where's? I do. Why is it in a money market? Or it something? may be. It may and, not be. It, it is. But we're not really sure. To be aware of it because we don't we don't know where that money. It right. says fund balance. That's all. Right. All right. I just was looking to clarify in my own mind what was going on. Yep. <laughs> not that clear. <laughs> is it a scary mind or is it okay? Yeah, not at all. One never knows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So we good on thank, the. Thank you. Are we good on the treasurer's report, folks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just because the hour is getting waning on. Yes. Uh, audit preparation ongoing. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Anything we need to know or do? Um, no, they're coming August eighteenth and nineteenth. Oh. And then June 18th is Sunday. It's 19th and 20th. The 19th is Monday. Sorry. 19th. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Monday is when we're meeting at the school at 6.30. Talk about the giant town garage. Okay. Warrants. Oh, we got other business too, right? Additions? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. A consideration of appointment and potential motion to appoint Zoe Christian as a full-time rep to CBRPC. The Planning so, Commission voted to recommend Zoe at the August 1st, 2024 PCB. Make a recommendation to, I make the motion to appoint Zoe Christensen to the Central Vermont. Vermont Planning Commission. Regional Planning Commission. Regional Planning yeah. Commission. Second. Any further discussion? Godspeed. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, the ayes appear to have it, they do have it. We've had a lot of different people. At the CBI yes. yes. We got one for decades. A long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so that takes care of that. And now we have uh, warrants, which are right here. And and we can be doing the select board memo or the report from our town administrator. Sure. So the warrant, uh, the August 5th warrant includes the ash tree um, payment. 
uh, about 21000 for that, for that contract, because it's now complete. Um, we also have, uh, which Guthrie mentioned earlier, the FEMA declaration request is still in process. Um, we also have a Coburn Bridge debris MOU is in process as well to pick up the debris there. Um, we also received a letter um, regarding the FEMA risk map, mapping, assessment, and planning program. So that's in process. We have 30 days to provide any feedback. Um, there are URLs in that letter. I've requested uh, the URLs again because they don't work and or access for those. So that's in process. Um, we had two applicants, potential applicants, asking questions regarding the minutes taker job. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, but that's we're great. still need the application and resumes, um, but we're in the cool. talking stage. Um, Rosie, you're almost fired. Good. Because <laughs> <laughs> Zoe is fired. And then I, she plan, resigned. I plan to keep posting that in the front porch for him until I get someone there. Sure. Um, and then also just a quick reminder, the EMFD joint meeting is August 8th at 7 p.m. at EMFD. This week. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. You have enough bodies for that, right? Oh, each month there, five times okay. August 8th. Yeah, this Thursday. Yeah, this Thursday. So we go over yeah. the contract language, yeah. and then as far as all the meetings I, I have here. I can, I can be there. This is the one we said we'd all be there and look at that contract. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. Right. Well, it's also, they've got it there, rather. It's a regular exactly. meeting, right? Exactly, too, yeah. Okay. All right, so. The only thing is we've got to sign. Okay, we've got to sign the um, curb cut, which I've got somewhere here in my file papers. And, I think and the warrants. The warrants are going right down. Yeah, okay. Look at that. We're on time. That's wow. Awesome. <laughs> so all that. Thank you. That's incredible. I think I think we should keep you as the uh, chair. Yeah. You did such a good job. <laughs> Long, long, long live the chair. You want some favor or something. Long live the chair. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm suspicious of your verbiage. No, 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 no. Are we still in session? Or Especially no? yes, after no. your homestead filing. <laughs> okay, so this is the Peter Heitman copy, but I think I had the original one. Um, are, we done, are we done with everything? We, yeah, we're just going to sign card. that third okay. card. Oh, motion. here it is, right here. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I've got to, I gotta pass this around. Sure. I know, but we can end the meeting and yep. yeah.